Today, I'm going to teach you five things to avoid while posing hands. Hey everybody, I'm Lindsay Adler. I'm a portrait and fashion photographer based in New York. Now, we all know that posing is difficult, but it's even more difficult to pose hands. So what I wanna talk about today is five things that I look for when I'm posing my subject, specifically focusing on the detail of hands. Because what will happen is the entire pose will be perfect, but then the hand is a little bit off and that's all you can see. So I wanna share those five things that I always try to avoid. And of course, I'm gonna share how I fix those problems. The first problem that I try to avoid while posing hands is having the palm turned too much towards camera. The inside of your hand, it's large, it's bright, it's distracting, and the general rule when posing hands is you usually want to have the pinky side of the hand towards camera. Now, this is not something 100% of the time, but most of the time. And this is because it is a much more elegant, smooth line. So when I'm posing my subjects and their hand is turned a little bit too much with the palm towards camera, I simply have them rotate their hand away. So let's take a look at this in action. All right, so Rochelle, can you place your hand up soft next to your face? Perfect. Now, even though she has really elegant lines to her fingers, I think I'm seeing just a little bit too much palm. It's not terrible, but it could be improved. So let's see what it looks like before. Perfect. Great. All right, taking a look, you can see just how bright that palm looks and it's getting way too much attention. So can you rotate your hand in toward your face just a little bit, a little bit less right there. That looks beautiful. Great. So you can see that just even a little subtle change in the position of her hand makes it so that I'm looking more at her eye instead of the brightness of the palm. The next thing that I try to avoid while posing hands is having the fingers too tense. When people are nervous or they're stressed, they show their tension in their hands and you don't want that to be communicated through your photograph. So what I'm talking about is the hands balled in fists or maybe they're kind of digging with their, their fingers or the fingers are a little bit too rigid, it looks very robotic. So what I'll do is I'll look for that detail and then I'll coach my subjects in a way that relaxes those fingers and it gives a much more confident, relaxed look to the entire photograph. So let's take a look at this. All right, can you pose your hands crossed? All right, so when I'm looking here, you can see that our fingers look a little bit tense, a little bit too straight. Let's take a shot, Looks great, okay. But now what I want you to do is, can you just separate your fingers and relax them just a bit? Perfect, that wiggle is great. By coaching her to wiggle her fingers just a little bit, to relax those fingers, the photo becomes much more approachable. The body language looks much more comfortable. The next thing that I try to avoid while posing hands is having the hands dig into the body too much. This could actually be the body, but specifically I'm focused more on the face. If I tell someone to put their hand on their hip, a lot of times they'll dig the fingers in and it's not flattering, so I'll have them touch much more softly. Now, a very common pose is to have a subject place their face into their hand, but without direction, people often put too much weight on their hand and the fingers start to dig into the skin and the results aren't flattering. So let's take a look at this and how I fix it. All right, so can you just place your hand next to your face? Perfect, so she's leaning in. Taking a look at this shot, I definitely don't think that the hand position is flattering. It's distorting the shape of her face and those indentations, they're really distracting. So instead of her actually placing her head in her hands, what I'm going to do is have her barely caress, barely touch, the side of her face with the hand. I can get a similar position, but without those distractions. All right, so can you place your hand real soft to the side of the face, but what you're going to do is just barely caress it, just like that, perfect. And if the fingers are too tense, you have them wiggle and set them back down, beautiful. Perfect. So you look at this change, I still have the same essence of the photograph, the hand next to the face, but it is far more flattering.
The next thing that I look to avoid when posing hands is having stray fingers. So what I mean by that is I don't want a thumb jutting out or a pinky. It really breaks up the smooth lines of the hands and it becomes a visual distraction. So let's do another pose with the subject's hand by her face. Uh, but can you put it right here for me? All right, so when I look at this, all I see is that thumb jutting out. It breaks up the smooth lines and I find it to be distracting. Instead, what I want to do is have the subject tuck her thumb beside the index finger. And I would do the same thing maybe if the pinky were jutting out. I'd have her make it create a smoother line next to the rest of the fingers. And a lot of times this has to do with just relaxing and replacing the hands. Okay, beautiful. Look, I'm just a little softer, sorry. Good. When you compare these two photographs side by side, in the first photograph, all I see is that thumb, but with just a couple of inches, just moving it over just a little bit, the photograph becomes much more elegant. The last thing that I try to avoid while posing hands is ill-posed, ill-positioned wrists. If the wrist is too much at a right angle, it looks awkward, it's not a pretty line, and it looks very robotic. The other thing I try to avoid related to this is something called foreshortening. Foreshortening happens when anything is coming directly to or away from camera. So if the wrist is bent and the hand is turned towards the body, it looks cut off. And same thing if it's pointed towards the camera. So instead, I like to have longer lines, smoother lines to the bend of the wrist. In fact, actually bending the wrist up is usually more elegant, but you can also bend the wrist down slightly. Just avoid those right angles. And then you usually want the pinky side of the hand towards camera instead of having the fingers pointed back towards the subject. So let's take a look at this. Can you place your hand somewhere around here? Okay, so this is a perfect example of foreshortening. Looking at the shot, it looks more like uh, she's missing her fingers, that everything is cut off. So instead we're going to turn the hand so the pinky side of the hand is facing camera. Great, and you can, yep, that's perfect. Great. You can see she can still have her hand towards her clavicles or towards her chest, but without the unpleasing foreshortening. And then let's put her hand up near your face. Watch what this right angle looks like. It looks more like her chin is resting on a table created by her hand, but instead let's elongate that line. It'll become more elegant. Perfect. And wiggle those fingers real soft. Beautiful. You can see that the wrist is still somewhat bent down. We're avoiding that strong angle, which becomes very, very distracting in the overall flow of the pose. So when posing your subject, what I recommend is to get the overall pose right and then check for the detail of the hands. Because if the hands aren't right, the entire pose won't look right. If you found this video helpful, I have an entire posing series dedicated to the ins and out and the essentials of posing any subject. So you can check the link below for more information on that. And I have a new posing guide and posing cards specifically dedicated just to inspiration of posing hands. There are 100 different cards, different poses. Each one of these is going to be inspiration for posing hands on your shoots. So next time that you shoot, I hope you hear me in the back of your head, helping to remind you exactly what you need to do to get those hands looking their best. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.